Would you turn up at the movies and order popcorn and a slushy and some sweets without first checking what the price is going to be? Probably not, because the movies in Zimbabwe are pretty expensive, never mind buying all the sweets and goodies that go with it. There are very few people in the world who are rich enough to just walk into a shop and buy anything they want without even checking the price tag. For most of us, we're going to be really careful where we decide to spend our money. Do we really need this thing we want to buy? Is it a price that we agree with? Do we have enough money? Perhaps there'll be something that we have to sacrifice to make up for if we're going to buy this item. There's a section in Matthew and Luke in the Bible called the cost of being a disciple. And Jesus refers to money and family and how we're going to have to make sacrifices in this life if we're going to be a follower of Jesus. This is the story that Jesus was involved in in the Bible. One day Jesus was walking with the crowds and they were bumping into him and jostling and all trying to get his attention at the same time. They were walking from one town to another. They were probably trying to ask the cleverest questions and try and get Jesus' attention by doing silly tricks. But Jesus finally turned around to them and he said, if you are to be my disciple, you must deny yourself, take up your cross and then follow me. Basically what Jesus was saying was if you really want to be on his team and you want to be a disciple, it's going to cost you something. Always you're going to have to put Jesus first, even ahead of your own family. Even in front of your mom and dad, even in front of your brothers and sisters and your friends. Jesus tells us in the Bible as well that it's very important to honor your mom and dad and to look after your family. But one day, if we have to make a decision and a choice between following Jesus and doing something our family wants us to do, Jesus is going to have to come first. It's going to be tough. Thinking of the crowds with Jesus, I bet you that there were a couple of people who just stopped right there and then on the road and said, what? I have to deny everything for you, Jesus? I'm out of here. I'm going back home. Others would have thought about it and said, okay, I'm willing to give up everything even putting my family first for you, and they still want to be a good disciple for Jesus. When I was at senior school, there were some friends that I was with, and they were so special to me, but a lot of the time they would swear. Um, I often kept quiet, and I didn't tell them not to do it, but one day, one of them suddenly said to me, oh, Jen, I'm so sorry that we've been swearing in front of you. I know that you're religious, and you probably don't like it. So I had lots of emotions going through me at that point. Sadly, my first thought was, oh my goodness, I'm so different to them. I can see that they probably don't like me much and I don't really fit in with this crowd. But that wasn't true at all. I loved them, they loved me. But there was just something different about how I was as a Christian. Um, on the other hand, I suddenly had this emotion of, wow, they know that I love Jesus. They know that Jesus is in my heart and I don't do what they do. They see me as something different and I was proud of that. I was so proud that I had Jesus on my side. And from then onwards, it gave me so much courage through the rest of my senior school years that I could stand up and be who I was created to be. I didn't have to be like everybody else, even though it cost me a little bit of my friendship. There were times over the years where my friends would go out on the weekends and on Monday morning, I would hear what they had got up to and part of me always felt a little bit left out. But actually that didn't matter. My relationship with Jesus and how I portrayed my life and how I led my life was more important. And it stood me in far better standing throughout my life that I'm a follower of Jesus, not following the crowd despite the sacrifices that it was at school. It's going to be a sacrifice for you to be a Christian and for you to stand out from the crowd. But take courage. It is worth it. Often when Jesus wants us to learn about a serious matter, he tells us a story in the form of a parable. So Jesus has two stories in that section, which is called the cost of being a disciple. And he talks about somebody who wants to build a tower. And he says, if you want to build a tower, wouldn't you work out the costings first? You would check how much it costs for the foundations and the bricks and the roof before you start to build. And if you don't do that, what if you can only afford to build the foundation? 
Jesus says, your friends will laugh at you if you are not able to finish it. Jesus gives another example. He talks about a king, and a king has to go against an enemy to war. He says, check the size of your army first and make sure that you can beat the other army. If you can't, I recommend that you go to the other king in peace and try and make a treaty with him. What Jesus is telling us is that we need to plan for things. We plan, we check our money, and we always make sure that we are doing the right thing before we start it. And he wants us to be the same with his discipleship. Can we guarantee that we are going to do our best for Jesus? Of course, we're going to make mistakes. But can we always do our best for Jesus from the very beginning? In Matthew 16, verses 24 to 27, Jesus says, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? What can anyone give in exchange for his soul? The Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. So Jesus has given us much more than we could ever afford on our own. Despite the chips and the sweets at the movies, God has given us so much more of himself when he gave us his son who died for us. The Bible says that the price of sin is death, which is eternal separation from God. But God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to die in our place for us. He took the punishment for sin on himself so that we could have a relationship with God and our eternal life with him. Our salvation cost God his only son not just his reputation with his friends at school, but his actual life. Jesus wants us to know that the price for serving him is big, but actually it's small compared to what he did for us. We may lose our friends, popularity, money, or possessions for Jesus, but there is no price that we could pay that would equal what God did for us. If you want to see just how much it can cost a person to follow Jesus, Let's look at the disciples. 10 of the 11 who lived to see Jesus rise from the tomb were martyred for their faith. That means that they were killed for following Jesus. The 11th disciple was John. He was imprisoned, he was tortured, and he was finally exiled to an island. Still today, there are missionaries, pastors and extraordinary Christians being arrested and beaten and even killed for their faith in countries where it is illegal to even own a Bible. No matter how hard these anti-Christian governments try to stamp out Christianity, they can't. If you Google what is the world's largest religion, you will find Christianity with more than two billion people throughout the world are Christians today. People have tried for 2,000 years, but you're not going to get rid of Jesus. Jesus paid for our sins, and he offers us a chance for eternal life. As Jesus said in today's passage, what good is it for a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? If you give up everything you have, it's still not equal to what Jesus did for us. Serving Jesus may never cost you even a single friend, but it might also cost you everything. It will still be worth it. One day we will all see Jesus face to face, and if we're willing to pay the price for Jesus here, we'll certainly get to experience life with Jesus in heaven. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to die for our sins. Help us to remember what Jesus did for us so that we will have the courage to sacrifice whatever it takes to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Ba 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 